They say that breakfast is the most important meal of the day, but what they fail to mention is that it's also the hardest to fit in with mornings being so rushed and all. Well, honey, don't skip breakfast, skip the chaos. I've got eight speedy and scrumptious make-ahead breakfast meals that will make your mornings a breeze. These recipes are gonna be your go-to when you're short on time, ingredients, or maybe both. These make-ahead meals are perfect for tossing in your work or lunch bag and range from savory, vegetarian, low or no carb, along with some downright decadent indulgences. But first this, I cook like your grandma, so there are no strict recipes here. But don't worry, I'll give you detailed guidance. I consider that freeing you from strict measurements and encourage you to substitute with what you've got. Right after this video, you should feel like you can go to your kitchen and get a move on it instead of feeling overwhelmed thinking that you need to rush out and go to the grocery store. Now you've got to prepare yourself for this recipe that is my top pick for a decadent and delicious oatmeal that is not overnight oats. Freezer oatmeal, my friends, is the unsung hero we all need to celebrate and I need you to help me get the word out. Oh yeah, it's that good and it's about to revolutionize your breakfast game too. Start by cooking quick, old-fashioned, or steel-cut oats using your favorite method. I'm using quick oats and adding them to a pot of simmering milk. I like to add dates, which lends sweetness and reduces the amount of brown sugar I'll use. Dates are also full of nutrients, fiber, and anti antioxidants. I'll add just a three quarters cup of sugar to this large batch. And since I've got some craisins, I'll sprinkle a few of those in too. Now I like to sneak in other things like wheat germ, which helps boost immunity and quinoa for added amino acids. Then I'll season to taste with cinnamon. Give things a good stir and then grab a container that you can transfer your oatmeal to to store in the fridge for at least an hour or two because you want your oatmeal to firm up a bit. After your oatmeal has cooled, I love taking silicone muffin trays to portion single servings of oatmeal into. Use your spoon or hands to shape them up a bit. I have a few blackberries on hand, and if you have fresh fruit, go ahead and chop or directly press it into your oatmeal cups. I'm also going to sprinkle these cups with some almonds for an added protein boost and crunch. Goodness, don't these look good? Go ahead and place your tray in the freezer. Oh, these oatmeal cups are perfect for frozen fruit. Like before, just take your fruit pieces and press them into the oatmeal. This blend has cherries, blueberries, and strawberries. If you don't have fresh or frozen fruit, add canned. Here are some fried apples that will make a delicious oatmeal addition. Since I don't want my entire oatmeal mixture to be apples, I'm adding them at this part, but you could have added them when the oatmeal was still on the stove. All right, let's add this mix to the muffin pan too. Your oatmeal cups will need to remain in the freezer for at least three to four hours or until fully frozen. Here are our frozen oatmeal cups. Knowing that this deliciousness is waiting for you when you wake up makes mornings that much easier. Let me show you how easy this pops out of a silicone tray. Oh, I'm not using a special muffin tray. I just picked this up at Aldi a couple of years ago. I'm certain that any brand will work. The oatmeal combinations I prepared can be mixed or matched, but I'm going to store all of them in a freezer safe bag. I usually eat uh, about two in the morning and my husband eats about four but you will never need to worry again about making too much or too little when you cook oatmeal this way. Freezer oatmeal is healthy, it's quick to make, and an affordable breakfast that'll keep you full. If I am really rushed and need to take breakfast to work with me, I just take a wide mouth mason jar and pop two oatmeal cups inside. I place a silicone jar jacket over the jar, which can be safely microwaved and keeps your hands cool when holding a hot jar and pop it in my bag. To cook, just add boiling water to your desired texture and wait a few minutes or pop things in the microwave or pan and voila, you've got fully loaded flavorful oatmeal at your fingertips. Now doesn't this look good? Have you noticed oatmeal bars at the grocery store keep shrinking and some barely contain any real fruit filling? Well, those bars aren't hard to make. Let me show you how. You need oat flour for this recipe, so just take your own oats and put them in a food processor and blend them until they form a fine powder. I used two cups. Then add one cup of ground almonds and a pinch of baking powder, a few shakes of cinnamon, and a sprinkle of salt. Transfer that mix to a bowl with milled flaxseed and pour in equal amounts of coconut oil and maple syrup with a spoonful or two of water. You're looking for a dough texture. Now you're going to roll the dough between two sheets of parchment paper into a freehand rectangle about a quarter of an inch thick and then you'll cut off any ragged edges which you can re-roll into a ball and make a freehand baked bar. This summer, I canned quite a few jars of sweet lemon blueberry filling, which is very versatile. So I'm using it as the filling in this recipe, but you can either make your own or use your favorite canned version using mashed filling from fresh or frozen fruit. 
Now look, I'm a home cook and you can take the time to pretty these things up, but I assure you they are delicious and include all the ingredients that you want without the junk or unknown ingredients that you don't. You bake these bars in a 350 degree oven for 20 to 25 minutes. What comes out are your own nutritional bars, which weren't difficult at all to make and used ingredients you likely always keep in your fridge or pantry. Be sure to batch prep these to have on hand for busy mornings, after school snacks, or a low sugar dessert. Now let me show you a fully customizable loaded with proteins and veggies breakfast that you can make in under five minutes. A time-saving hack that I love is to keep the ingredients I'll use to make a meal in a clear plastic bin that I keep in the fridge. The ingredients we'll use for our omelets includes ham, shredded cheddar cheese, bell peppers, one lonely zucchini, some fresh sliced mushrooms, and ground sausage. I'm going to share a few variations, but all of these recipes will use diced sautéed onions, to which I'll add a few handfuls of my mushrooms, and season to taste with a bit of seasoned salt. Next, grab your eggs, and I'm using quail eggs, which have minimal taste difference from chicken eggs. A few were double yolked, but since quail eggs are about the fifth the size of chicken eggs, you need about five quail eggs to equal one chicken egg. These eggs have a thick membrane, making them harder to crack than chicken eggs, which is why I prefer to use quail scissors. Next, take freezer and microwave safe containers. It's best to use canning jars, which are available in regular and wide mouth rims, but either are suitable for easily filling ingredients. Fill the base with your meat and veggies first, so here I am adding the diced ham. Next I'm taking our seasoned sautéed onions and mushrooms and piling those on top, then we'll sprinkle with cheese. To be clear, you can use as much of these ingredients as you want, but since food expands and builds pressure as it freezes, you'll need to leave one inch of headspace to prevent your jars from breaking in the freezer. Wide mouth mason jars typically include a freeze fill line on the side for reference, and even if you plan to store these in the fridge, just avoid filling to the top because your omelet will puff up a bit as it cooks. I had some green onion in the garden out back, so I sprinkled a bit on top for that unbeatable, slightly sweet and peppery taste. After you place the lid on top, I'm using reusable plastic lids, but the metal lids and rims work just as well. You'll shake it up really good for 15 seconds or so. Don't skip this step because this helps incorporate the fatty yolks into the whites, which helps to sustain their texture in the freezer. Let's move to a different combination I enjoy, which starts by scrambling up some sausage crumbles. We'll also chop up some bell peppers. I'm using a combination of yellow, orange, and green bell peppers, and I'm going to saute them, which coaxes out most of their sweet flavor. After a minute or two, it's ready to be poured into the bottom of your jars, and you'll pour your egg mixture on top. Doesn't a sausage and pepper omelet sound amazing? Plus, all of these recipes are low carb, a great source of protein, and an excellent way to get some essential vitamins and minerals like A, B, E, iron, and zinc. Let's keep things moving and dice up the one zucchini I have, which we'll toss into the pan with a bit of turkey bacon, which I sliced to make it easier to eat with a fork. Then I added in the remaining mushrooms. I encourage you to look in your fridge and reach for the single or soon to expire ingredients that you have, and instead of tossing them, repurpose them into this recipe, which can last in the freezer for up to three months. Sprinkle with cheese and add your egg mixture, and you've got a way to feed your family fast. Now a frozen jar will need to defrost, but to reheat, just pop the mason jar into the microwave without the lid and microwave for about one minute and 30 seconds. Look what comes out, deliciousness. If this is our first time meeting, hi, I'm Cassandra from the blog, becomingafarmgirl.com. I'm here to help you start canning and cooking from scratch and show you ways to use your home can pantry and meals your family will love. I'm not thrilled about sky high prices, but I do keep my eye on the frozen food aisle for inspiration. Don't blink or you'll miss how fast this recipe comes together. Take sausage patties or the breakfast meat of your choice and fully cook. Next, take pita bread, and this is an oat and wheat mixture, but you could also use tortilla or naan bread. Slice your pita to open it in half, and then add a slice of your favorite cheese, then slide in your sausage. <laughs> yup, honey, you're done. Create an assembly line and stack them up. I like to toss two to a bag so that I can grab a bag for myself and my husband, and then toss in the microwave and head out the door. Making breakfast sandwiches at home will save you so much money. Y'all, breakfast drive through prices are headed through the stratosphere. You can easily drop close to 
at or a little bit above $10 for one small mediocre coffee and a meh tasting sandwich. And don't get me started on grocery store breakfast freezer meals because those prices are highway robbery too. Sneak a peek at your frozen food aisle and you'll see that for the price and serving size, which are typically six or less per box, you're forking over several dollars per item. And as you can see, some of these prices are reduced because they're on sale. Breakfast items have some of the highest grocery store markups, so they're always worth assembling yourself and making from scratch. That's why I created a homemade version of these earlier. Only six come in a box, but I bought pitas, a pack of cheese, and sausage patties to make 12 for $5. So let's go ahead and make some breakfast sandwiches. Start with bread of your choice. I'm using some molasses oat rolls that I pulled out of the freezer and slicing them down the middle. Store-bought bacon slices never give you this much and it won't be cooked to perfection like this, so it's always worth it to cook your own. After letting my bacon cool, I cut it into bite-sized pieces and then I added soft scrambled eggs, sprinkled with cheese and added my bacon and green toppings. I toasted them in the oven for just a few minutes and after I pulled them out, it was hard not to eat one. <laughs> I'll baggy these up and toss them into the freezer so that I can have a filling breakfast on the go that I can take to work, heck, even eat during my commute. If you're looking for a low-carb, keto-friendly breakfast, try this alternative. If you like the idea of a breakfast sandwich, but you're looking to avoid the carbs, or you just want to get a serving of veggies in first thing in the morning, swap the bread for peppers. I assure you, these are just as delicious and give you that same portable breakfast option without weighing you down. Anytime I catch peppers on sale, or I have a few that I want to use up, I love creating a filling for it and just tossing it into the freezer. You'll want to leave the peppers raw for this recipe and bake them slightly for like five to seven minutes. This is because when you go to defrost your pepper sandwich, it'll soften up on you then. Breakfast smoothies are the ultimate morning fuel, but let me be honest, I can't be bothered juggling that many ingredients in the morning. Honey, I am on the struggle bus some days. I keep a basket filled with some of my specialty superfood blends, so that's what I'll add to these smoothies. You can add, reduce, or omit any of these ingredients depending on your nutritional focus, so just take this as inspiration. Acai powder is known for boosting immune function, so I'm adding that. Cacao powder tastes delish and contains flavonoids and antioxidants that improves heart health, cognitive function, and mood. Chia seeds are high fiber and contain omega-3 fatty acids. This is a green powder blend that I've mixed with my own dehydrated kale and spinach. Hemp seeds are a nutritious source of protein and tons of minerals and really helps with digestion. I'm adding some ripe bananas for texture and potassium. I'm also going to throw in some bee pollen, which is nutrient rich and supports immune function, improves allergy resistance, and naturally increases your energy levels. Dates lend sweetness and fiber. And then I also tossed in some dried goji berries, which help manage blood sugar levels. Turmeric powder is a potent anti-inflammatory and camu camu powder is rich in vitamin C and antioxidants and it helps combat oxidative stress. Almonds are high in vitamin E and I had some on hand. Unrefined organic coconut oil is excellent for hair, skin, and nail health. After I toss a few things in that target my needs, I'm relieved to know that I can enjoy a weekday smoothie. These store in the freezer for at least three months. To prepare the smoothies, I just reach for my blender and add milk or yogurt or water and blend until smooth. Baked French toast cups are great for meal prepping and perfect to freeze for a quick reheat in the microwave in the morning. In a medium bowl was together milk, heavy cream, sugar, and eggs. Again, I'm using quail eggs because I have a steady supply of several dozen each week. Aren't these eggs just gorgeous? And these are the quail scissors that I showed you earlier, but let me slow down and show you how they work. Essentially, the pointy end punctures the shell. I like to save the shells to make a calcium powder. Add the eggs along with vanilla, cinnamon, and a bit of salt. Whisk to combine. This recipe is perfect for the crust or ends of homemade loaves, but I also like to snag the reduce for quick sale specialty breads and then stash them in the freezer. Today I'm using a combination of challah bread and cinnamon raisin bread, but you could also use leftover croissants, brioche, or white bread that's a couple of days old or slightly stale. 
What you're gonna do is just cube the bread and add it to the egg mixture. Thoroughly saturate the bread and then you're going to get your silicone muffin trays and divide the mixture between the 12 muffin cups. There should be about a third of a cup in each cavity. Bake for 25 to 30 minutes until brown on top. Here's the bread I'll stick in the freezer for my next batch. It's about 7.40 in the evening right now, but I'm telling you, the satisfaction you get knowing that your family will be well fed and that even busy folks can provide satisfying meals makes the bit of prep worth it. It builds margin into your meal prep and your day. Oh, y'all, I wish you could smell these because they smell amazing and taste even better chiseled in maple syrup. All right, you know the routine from here. Bag them up and stick them in the freezer. Making pancakes and sausage is simply out of the question during the week. Instead, here's a time-saving alternative that makes a classic breakfast weekday doable. This recipe is downright fun to make and even more delicious to pop into your mouth. Begin by taking sausage links and pop them into the oven to cook until done. Now it's time to make a flavorful pancake batter. In a large bowl with two to three cups of flour, then one to two tablespoons of sugar per cup of flour that you used, along with one to two tablespoons of baking powder per cup of flour. You can fold in any other spices you prefer. I sprinkle with a pinch of salt and meh, like a tablespoon of cinnamon and a dusting of nutmeg. Then use another bowl to combine two eggs per cup of flour, milk, about three fourths cup per one cup of flour, two tablespoons of avocado oil and honey until thoroughly mixed. You're gonna add this to the flour mixture and stir just enough until things are moistened. Now, grab your silicone cupcake pan and place a cooked sausage link in each muffin cup. Then, cover the sausage with the batter and bake until lightly browned, about 20 to 25 minutes. I can't say it enough, I really love using silicone baking pans because they have a naturally nonstick surface, so you don't need to grease them or use liners. This makes it easier to remove your muffins without sticking or falling apart. I mean, look at how clean they pop out. Since this batter is a little sweet from the cinnamon and the nutmeg, I usually just eat them plain, but you can drizzle them in maple syrup to truly give you that pancake syrup and sausage experience. Believe me, both little and big kids will love these. the breakfast inspiration doesn't stop here. That's right, I have a whole other video showing you how to make eight other Mega Head breakfast recipes. And don't forget that video where I show you how to make tasty dupes for some of your favorite store-bought cereals. Check those out by clicking on the video on your screen. I'll see you in my kitchen or garden soon. Take care, friends.